plane of existence, and we need to maintain that. Uh, we can certainly expand, but we need to maintain and expand our core, not give up our core of who we are to, quote, expand into something else, because that will destroy who we really are. Right, and we often, because, again, of the misuse of terms, because of the media's uh, complicity in all of this, we often think of technology as being nothing to do with spirituality. In fact, spirit and technology are two words for the same thing. If you go back in history and you'll notice the emphasis of, of technology when it's used to write, to build pyramids, to feed the poor, you see, to irrigate great rivers. I mean, technology was in the hands of all of the most spiritual people in the past. It's been sequestered, it's been uh, repackaged, it's been sort of territorialized and owned by those who are the darkest of powers. It doesn't belong to them. The great samurai, you know, the people who could make the great swords in the past, the great horsemen, or the great, uh, you know, whatever, the musicians, the musicology, the, in the creators of instruments, you know, all of this is technology, isn't it? So technology surrounds us as part of who we are. But it also has a spiritual component. It needs to be back That's in right. the hands of the people who are spiritual, not in the hands of these demonic people who are using it to you know, destroy the humanity. That's right. We are a species who envisions and then creates. We are a exactly. just magical species compared to everything else on this planet. As neat as dolphins are, they've got nothing on Homo sapiens sapiens. And the enemy has to blunt and dumb down that creativity and get us focused off into issues of no significance or brute, bestial, lower level, making that, you know, through the mammalian image, uh, you know, through the uh, peer pressure to be that lower man instead of that higher man. And they claim that they are building a world for a higher man when the entire architecture is to destroy destroy what man is and feed us into a technocratic meat grinder. You got it. Uh, on the Michael Tassarin website, people will see an article there called Weapons of Mass Destruction Found, and it addresses this whole concept between the magic and the sorcery. I refer to what they're doing as sorcery, black sorcery. Basically, these people are possessed uh, by a kind of archon, a demonic force that they serve, or they've you can look at it the other way, that they have basically uploaded their own consciousness into that place, into that place of fear, envy, endless greed, endless darkness. It doesn't matter which way you look at it. Either something's possessed them or they have uploaded their consciousness. They, uh, what they've done is they've murdered their own spirit psychologically, and then by doing that, you allow this dark sorcery to enter into you. Well, you can look at it either way, but the, the sum result is the, the infected, the person who is that infected by that spiritual virus, cannot sit still. This is what the people of America and the world need to understand. That kind of infected person cannot sit still unless they go around and try to infect everybody else. The thing makes sense when you look That's at it right. from a psychological point Faith of view. Faith without works the, is dead, and, and that goes for the dark side and the light side. I mean, people are going to manifest and build what their core is. And, and then notice the occultists at the higher levels want to make everybody low-level atheist and not believe any of that, so that blinds us. But at the top, the real top atheists and people are wild satanic luciferians. So we're going to skip this break, too, behind the scenes at Infowars.com. Uh, Michael, let's just let's keep going because because I mean, have you n noticed and seen that the Theophilic societies and the Blavatskyites and the and the OTO people? When you get up to high level folks like like take Dr. Pianca, I keep talking about. He's he's in a Druid outfit. He says I love Lucifer on his website on the official UT website. He names his uh, his his bison bull Lucifer. Uh, you know, when you really get around these guys, they are into the occult, but then to their classes and everybody, they're making fun of anybody who's religious, anybody who believes there's other dimensions, anybody who believes there's more to the world. Uh, they go, oh, you're not of reason. And, and, and I see that as shuddering people from whatever humans are and, you know, whatever this hunger for religion, you know, shuttering us down here so they can operate up here with, as you call it, you know, their sorcery, which is their mind control. That's right. And many of these other organizations you see, are like fraternal orders in which you have to pass through them in order to be matriculated to get into, you know, what I would say, like what we talked about in the first segment, about the Atonists, the true story of Masonry. They're not just going to hand that down to anybody. So they put from the school level onwards through all of these various uh, occult and, and other organizations, you see, they're like steps on the ladder. I mean, even the Masons use the symbol of the ladder. You, you have to die into what you knew. You have to die to the world that you knew. And I believe this is a kind of insanity, a form of un, unsane un, insanity. And therefore, you have to sort of, they, they have a carrot and a stick approach in which you have to then matriculate, matriculate, matriculate until you are complicit and submissive enough so that they can then infect you with their infection. It's basically as simple as that. And until people strengthen themselves through knowledge, which is the only way to strengthen and have a spiritual connection to mm -hmm. something, you know, they're not going to be able to war well, you off talk the about, you, of these you, people. You talk about psychic vampirism. Uh, there is right. no doubt that's what this New World Order is. 
big time. You know, we're doing DVDs. That's another DVD project we're doing right now. Uh, I believe that things are moving so fast that you know. And there's remember, as we said earlier, there's only so much of this knowledge that we study that people can handle. They're already balking and they're already you know uh, covering their eyes and screaming to hide under the bed. Even with the sort of lower level stuff about the Illuminati and the you know the death of the Constitution, they can't even handle that. Let alone things like psychic vampirism and war on consciousness. So, you know, I tend to pace my stuff out there because I realize that sometimes, you know, and this, of course, does not include everyone. There are people who are totally ready for this, but the masses of the world are not ready for this. So you have to sort of go slow and pace what you're creating and what you're writing about, you know, what you're putting out there. You can tell them a little bit about it because the human race is so unready for a lot of this. There is an awakening taking place. But it's also a very natal situation. Well, I know this. I go off what my gut tells me. You know, I analyze the real world, what I can prove. But my gut tells me the human race is very, very old. The human race has incredible potential and is really going to go places uh, if we yeah. can only move past uh, this, this, this whole New World Order system. And uh, well, what pe- mm-hmm. My main message in most of my work is to understand the nature of deconstruction, that moving forward is, is partly acquisitive, and partly an active movement forward, but you also have to jettison in anything that moves forward, anything that's going to progress. It also needs to shed skins. It also needs to jettison and deconstruct all the, all the rubbish and all the miasma and all the webs, you see, of ignorance. Uh, learning is a dual process. It requires you to clean, just like we have to wash our bodies when dust you know, accumulates and dirt accumulates. We have to clean our cars, our homes, everything, the plates we eat off. And people sometimes have forgotten this in their search for the light. They also have to realize that there's a lot of parasites, a lot of sharks, a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of, you know, like we talked about earlier, a lot of darkness that comes around as you start moving towards the truth and towards the light. That's when the dirt is going to be shining up. That's when you're going to see the dirt for what it is. You can't say yuck and run away from it and hide. You've got to know how to take out the right kind of detergent to deal with the dirt, be it psychic or social or anything else. And in my work, the basic message to everyone is you're not going to have legal social, political sovereignty, or any solvency until you've got it mentally and spiritually. All right, stay there, stay there, stay there. Here we go. Documented. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. I fell into a burning ring of fire. You know, I take myself as a microcosm of a journey of awakening. Some people misinterpret what I'm doing as fear. No, fear would put people in their box in a catatonic state, in a fetal position, not moving forward. Why has Alex Jones, for all my foibles and, and problems, why have I been the most effective? And I, I, I think that's universally you know, pretty much accepted even by my detractors on all fronts. There's the most effective at waking people up. Well, it's because I reached out to the people of the United States and the world and, and taught them and showed them how much power they had and, and, and how much they could do to wake up others. And that's why it's you, the listeners, and the visitors of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. So you judge a tree by its fruits. We have really resisted the New World Order, had a lot of victories against them, woken up a lot of people, and it's because I have passion, and I am aggressive, and I am angry, and I shake people uh, out of the uh, mesmerized position they're in with the TV and the culture to then just kind of like a cold bucket of water, ice water, wake them up and, 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 and shake them out uh, of that. And Michael Desari and David Icke, many others, have also been very, very successful uh, at doing this. So, so what are your ideas of, of, of how to fight this technocracy? I mean, I want people to see how dangerous it is and know what a great threat it is so they will move out of the way of the threat and then over it and on top of it and, 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 you know, to, 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 to denature it. Um, I mean, what are your ideas of, of how this revolution of human you know, consciousness, uh, uh, how this is going to play out, and, and what are your ideas uh, in the solution? Well, see, whatever you want to call it, God, nature, has already given us the tools. It's called the human reason. It's called the human curiosity. This has built the greatest bridges. It has you know, created the shuttle. It, it has built the greatest nations on Earth. It's built pyramids. We already have the hardware, the, you know, the hardware within us installed, but it, what has happened is we've been conditioned to not use it, to doubt our own sensibilities, to doubt our own bodies, to doubt that we have control over our own lives and our own families and our own communities. And this has been this insipid drip feeding, you see, of the lie. I mean, I can back up and talk about what you just said there about being angry. You know, and first of all, I don't have a, deg- I do not have a degree in psychology, but I have studied the subject thoroughly, and I can tell you that you, Alex, are neither mad nor paranoid and that you are a person who's got the guts to stand up and be as mad as hell, who can deal, channel their anger positively, 
and this is what is needed. Maybe go back to the movie Network. You got to be as mad as hell. You got to fall in love with the word no. You got to ask questions, and you got to do it with anyone else comes to help you do it or not. And this is very vital. You know, as I said, Ulster men from my country fought in the War of Independence. Now, this war to me is still going on, and people need to be armed up because something is shooting at us. Something is taking away that which is most precious. And therefore, something has to be done. And you have to be as mad as hell. But you also have to channel that madness and that, 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 that healthy anger and be armed up to fight this kind of tiger in the long grass. It is not something that's going to make itself known. You could easily shoot in the wrong direction, you see. So people need to be armed up with knowledge and education. And I will not stand in my life, you see, which is happening a lot, I see in the world that these people who come into this subject, either they're bandwagon hoppers or, like we said, they may be debunkers or whatever, or they may just be a bunch of intellectuals who try to come there, you know, uh, with the same rules that they knew in the college and the university and the mainstream, jumping through the hoops, and then they come into this world and go, where's your qualifications, you know? Uh